But now I was born, as many of you know, in a little village called Loafer's Glory, North Carolina. It's a flat spot at the crossroads next to the banks of the mighty Tow River, which is not really mighty. And farmers would sit there at the banks of the Tow and loaf, chewing on the fat, chewing on tobacco, chewing on, well, whatever was near to hand. And so Rolliver's Glory is next to Bakersville, in case you don't know. And Bakersville is just up the holler from Spruce Pine. And if you still don't know where it is, you're not the only one. And I can remember the manse there, and I can remember my father telling stories of the chicken trucks coming to move the newlyweds' furniture into the manse. He remembers two things, especially about that time in his ministry and that early time in my life. The joy that the community had, learning to do less with more. Learning to do, wait, no, that's wrong. He never could tell a story, my dad. He remembered the joy of learning to do more, but with less. And so Christmases would often bring a, a bit of uh, uh, hand-sliced bacon from the farmer's pig or fresh eggs or a plucked or sometimes half-plucked chicken. His favorite stories, though, were around the barn raisings that he would see in the summer times. And all the community would come around, well, and, and again, he could never really tell stories. This is the 1970s, so it was probably more like a shed. But they would all gather around and, and raise the shed. And there was no plan, no foreman. They all just knew what to do. And they would call down from the ladder as they were putting up the shed. And they would call, I need six by two or five by nine. And sure enough, they would just cut it right then and there and throw the board onto the side of the shed. And Dad finally asked, what's the secret? How do you know what to do? There's no plan. There's no foreman. And they would simply say, well, we all have the same shed, and so the plan we know by heart. <laughs> and we all know what to do. And the key, friends, they would say, is to measure twice and cut once. If you hear me use that phrase, which I do often, that's where it came from. And this morning at St. Anne's of the Arbor, where there's great joy but no glory in loafing, the latest measurements are in 397 pledges, totaling almost $1.6 million. Now that's up by $240,000 from this time last year, and we've got 30 more pledges than last year at this time. So thank you for your faithfulness. This is a sign of an engaged, joyful community finding new life amongst a continuing difficult cultural period and bacterial period as well from the sound of my voice. Measure twice and cut once. Stewardship is about so much more than fundraising. This is not an NPR pledge drive. This is about us enacting our vision for ministry. It's about being smart about our ministry, clear in our vision and transparent in our actions. So I wanted to update you on not only where we are, but what we're doing. This week's session tasked our very own computer whisperer, our cocktail spinner, our music minister wrangler, Brent Ivey, to lead a small group of elders, we're calling them the Three Magi, in walking with staff and committees through a series of budget activities to address this 2023 shortfall. Now, these are to be definitive steps along our strategic goal of reaching a balanced budget in 2025. Transparency, equity, communication are all key parts to this process because they're our core values. Here at St. Anne's of the Arbor, there isn't much loafing, but God's glory shines among us, for there is great strength in joy among us, for unto us a child is born. We'll keep you posted along the way. But this Sunday, I say again to you, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your prayers as we continue to become that which God has called us to be. Hallelujah. Amen.